In this lesson, we're going to explore ultraviolet spectroscopy and how it can be used to analyze the pi bonding in organic molecules. Ultraviolet spectroscopy, or UV-Vis spectroscopy, is another form of absorption spectroscopy. And remember that in absorption spectroscopy, molecules absorb radiation and then undergo some sort of a transformation. The amount of energy imparted from ultraviolet radiation induces electronic configurational changes in molecules. In ultraviolet spectroscopy, the measurements are done in wavelength, specifically nanometers. Ultraviolet radiation is typically between about 190 and 400 nanometers. A typical spectrometer will measure absorptions from about 190 nanometers up to about 840 nanometers. And that goes well into the range of visible light. And that's why ultraviolet spectroscopy is often referred to as UV-Vis spectroscopy. So when a molecule absorbs a photon of ultraviolet light, it can excite an electron into a higher energy orbital. With organic molecules, there are two types of transformations that can occur, n to pi star and pi to pi star. An n to pi star transformation is simply the excitation of a non-bonding electron into a pi star orbital, a pi antibonding orbital. And of course, a pi to pi star transition would be the excitation of a pi bonding electron into a pi antibonding orbital. When we look at the relative energies of the molecular orbitals that can exist in a molecule, we see that the bonding molecular orbitals are lowest in energy, then non-bonding orbitals, and then the highest will be the anti-bonding orbitals. With that in mind, we can see that an n to pi star excitation will require less energy than a pi to pi star excitation. Remember that Planck's equation tells us that energy is linearly proportional to the frequency of radiation and inversely proportional to the wavelength. Since the pi to pi star excitation requires more energy than the n to pi star excitation, it will require a higher frequency of radiation and therefore a lower wavelength. And so typically, pi to pi star absorptions occur at a lower wavelength than n to pi star. Now, because both of the possible excitations require that an electron end up in a pi star orbital, it means that only organic molecules with pi bonds can actually be analyzed with UV-Vis spectroscopy. And that really limits its utility as an analysis tool. What UV-Vis spectroscopy can tell us is the extent of conjugation of the pi bonded systems in a molecule. Conjugation is simply an extended system of atoms with p orbitals. It's most frequently encountered with double bonds. In order for a pi system to be considered conjugated, all of the atoms that have p orbitals, in other words, all of the atoms that are either sp2 or sp hybridized, must be contiguous. So here I have two dienes. In the first example, we have a conjugated diene. And you can see that all four of the sp2 atoms are contiguous back to back to back to back. The second molecule represents an isolated diene. We have just as many atoms with p orbitals, but they're not all contiguous. So the two pi bonds are not conjugated. Now, every absorption in a UV-Vis spectrum will have a lambda max, which is just the wavelength of the most intense absorption for that particular excitation. Now, as you can see in this table, lambda max increases with an increase in the extent of conjugation. In other words, the more atoms with p orbitals you have in a row, the higher the lambda max. So you can see that a molecule with a rather short pi system like ethene will have a very short lambda max. As more and more atoms are included into the pi system, you can see that the lambda max increases. So 1,3-butadiene, which now has four contiguous atoms with p orbitals, has a lambda max of 217 nanometers. So UV-Vis spectroscopy can be used to help determine the extent of conjugation in a molecule. The intensity of any absorption is the molar absorptivity, and molar absorptivity also increases with an increase in conjugation. It's certainly possible that a molecule could show multiple absorptions on a UV-Vis spectrum. Remember that there are two possible types of excitation, pi to pi star and n to pi star. A UV-Vis spectrum will show a distinct absorption for each unique pi system in a molecule. If you look at this first molecule, it has only one pi system, a pi system incorporating two atoms and one pi bond. Because it has one unique pi system, it will show one unique pi to pi star absorption. 
Now, the second molecule has two pi bonds, but because they're conjugated together, this represents only one pi system. And that means this will also have only one absorption, one absorption for that one unique extended pi system. The third molecule has two separate pi systems. Those two pi systems are not conjugated together, but this molecule will still only have one absorption because those two pi systems are identical by symmetry. There's a mirror plane bisecting the molecule that reflects one double bond to the other. And because they are absolutely identical by symmetry, they will have only one absorption. In the last example, again, we have two separate pi bonds and in this case, they represent two distinct pi systems. The double bonds are not conjugated together, and there is no symmetry element relating the two. You can definitely tell one double bond from the other. So this molecule will have two unique, albeit very similar, pi to pi star absorptions. Remember that n to pi star absorptions involve the excitation of a non-bonding electron, like a lone pair electron, into a pi star orbital. An n to pi star absorption will only occur if there are non-bonding electrons either on or directly adjacent to an atom in the pi system. So if you look at this first molecule, the pi bond allows it to have a pi to pi star absorption. But there are lone pairs on the oxygen, and that oxygen is a part of the pi system. So it will also show an n to pi star absorption. In the second example, again, there's a pi bond, so there will be a pi to pi star absorption. Here we can see that this oxygen has two lone pairs on it, and that oxygen is directly adjacent to the atoms involved in the pi system. So this too will show both a pi to pi star absorption and an n to pi star absorption. In the last example, again, we have a pi bond, so it's going to have a pi to pi star absorption. And while this molecule does have lone pairs, those lone pairs are not on the pi system nor on an atom directly adjacent to the pi system. So those lone pairs will not give rise to an n to pi star absorption. So here's a UV vis spectrum of acetone. And you can see the acetone structure has the pi bond, but it also has lone pairs on the oxygen, and that oxygen is a part of the pi bonded system. So acetone is going to show both pi to pi star and n to pi star excitations. You can see that the pi to pi star absorption is at a much lower wavelength than the n to pi star absorption. We've already described that a pi to pi star excitation requires more energy and therefore will occur at a lower wavelength than an n to pi star excitation. You can also see that the n to pi star excitation is much, much weaker than the pi to pi star. And that is usually the case. n to pi star excitations are usually very weak on a UV-vis spectrum.